prophetic mothers, a mother that loves, prays, directs, and nurtures spiritual growth and development. The wings of fire. Hi guys, this is Prophetic Mothers, where your own very mother speaks to you directly in words, in testimonies, in nurturing you up in your spiritual growth. The first we have on our list is our very beautiful princess, Naomi. Just listen to what she has to the Deeper Life Christian Ministry, named here as a child. And all those who were in that neighborhood where I was born at that time, they knew who I was. Because I could not, as a, as a baby, I, when I started walking, I could not walk in a place or crawl in a place and you would not notice me somehow. So as I started to grow up, probably when I was in the, um, when I was about nine, ten years old, and I'm walking down from school, people would just meet me and say, "You must be Nami. Yes, the face is still the same, and you may not know me. We know you." So it's always been like that. And then from my very first crusade, it was it was a huge success. The fame went about town. I believe God was doing it by Himself. I'm quite reserved as a person. In between being an introvert and, well, it's in between the two. You can't say I'm an introvert and you cannot say that I'm an extrovert. So, um, but somehow everything I did gained attention. I believe God kept everything somehow in one package. So how I arrived at this de destination, where I am right now, is being God. Because one thing always just happens that would publicize me again. Everything I do is loud. I drink water, it's loud. I decide not to drink water, it is loud. So it's God. I believe this destiny chose me. This destination chose me. I, I, have, no, I have no doubt that there's a hand of the supernatural in everything that is happening to me. This cannot be ordinary. You cannot, no matter how much you chase cloud, if it's not chasing you, it's not going to happen. So I believe it's God doing it by himself. Exactly. Yes, um, a little bit of hard work cons um, consistency, you know, not a little bit, a lot a of lot. it. You have to be consistent. You have to know what you are doing. Um, you have to be resilient because there will be many bombs on the way and there was a whole lot for me but every time i kept on forging ahead acting like i can't see the bombs acting like there are no stones being thrown at me i just keep moving and there's this song that comes to my spirit all the time move on move on don't be tired christ jesus understand it shall be well move on move on don't be tired Christ Jesus understands, it shall be well, that no matter what comes my way, from way back, since I was a child, I got to know the Lord at the age of nine, I gave my life to Christ at the age of nine, and those songs ministered to me, it was one of our chorus songs, I was born into a Christian family, where you come back from church, there's house caring fellowship, whether or not you are a part of it, you are going to have to hear them by force, because they are not leaving your house until after dinner. <laughs> <laughs> so we got to eat our dinner by the way in our house, and then they sing all these songs. So when I gave my life to Christ, the songs became very alive to me. Mm. So no matter what will come my way, I would remember, no matter what comes my way, my life is not mine. My life is hidden in Christ Jesus. It's about him. He's the, drive. He's the driver. He drives through me. He walks through me. So those things keep me going. It's really been a tough journey for me. It doesn't, I don't look like what I go through most of the time. I don't know how it's like that. I just have these tender things. I, I can't make it up. But in all, I can say behind this whole uh, glitz and glam that people see, every time they look at my picture, there's this serenity. There's this peace that you see. And it's the peace of God because I've got joy like a river. Mm. Joy like a river, Amen. joy like a river in my soul. I've got joy like a river, joy like a river, joy like a river in my soul. So yes, it's about God. I think God picked me up very early and very quickly. He knew there were going to be many tons on the way, but he kept guiding. 
kept seeing me through every mm-hmm. order. It's been really tough. Mm-hmm. It's been really tough. Mm-hmm. If I'm really going to be specific, I will say some, you know, that you will wonder how, how is that even possible? Did this really happen to me? If it's about, um, if it's about being where, see, looking at people up there, hmm. sometimes people up there wish that, you know, if only they can, if this cop can pass over me, if only I can be left alone and not threatened with all these things that come my way. I would, I would start from the story of my birth, how I was born. Um, for those who have medical knowledge, they will know what is called a blue baby. Mm. When oxygen is already out, Dead. I was I was dragged out of my mother's womb because she had prolonged labor and she was bleeding so much. They were trying not to lose her and they were trying not to lose me. Anyways, by the time I came, it was almost like we should, you know, ow, ow. I don't even know how I survived that because ordinarily with what had happened to me, I was supposed to be um, having some disabilities, sort of. But I grew up into a very complete, fine baby. <laughs> and it, I, I looked nothing like what happened to me when I was born. Then, when I got into secondary school, I went to St. Lugia's Grammar School in Akure here. Um, I got in fine because I was brilliant, so I got a good, I got good grades and all of that. And you know, I got into school. In fact, the day I was to write the exam, I was so sick that they were wondering if I should go home and forget about the exam. But I wanted to get into St. Louis, so I wrote the exam and got in. First time, I started falling sick, very, very sick. So most of the time, I was not in school. Then the worst time was when I was to write the promotional examination. Very, very bad. I came in two weeks to the examination. I resumed back to school two weeks to the examination. I didn't know what they were going to ask. There was nothing I could do. My notes were not complete and all of that. So I wrote the exam and I failed. (laughs) Woefully. And the principal at that time, knew my family and she had this special interest in me, you know. Uh, so she was wondering what is wrong, the vice principal, what is wrong with this girl? They felt I was too young, maybe that was it. I got in when I was nine, but that was not the reason I was doing where I was always collecting prize from primary school. For those who we went to school together, they can testify. So, but at this time I had failed very woefully and they didn't just ask me to repeat, they recommended that be taken to another school. Mm. Wow. So everything was very bad. I was a child. I thought it was my fault. So I did not go home. I had a friend who was so concerned for me. If she's watching right now, she'll be able to attest to this. And she said, hey, what are we going to do? And I said, I want to die. Because if I go home with this result, my father, In fact, I am finished. Let me kill myself before he kills me. (laughs) So as children, we started going to every pharmacy that we could see, asking for, there's something they call Gamalin 20 or something at that time. What? Yes. So when we had to say, ah, ah, eh, yo, mo, buru, kui, boy, ki, 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 la, ya, fiche. You know? So luckily, nobody sold to us. I really wanted to die because I'm a perfectionist. I enjoy always being perfect and I hate to be, you know, I hate it when you have to tell me what to do and to come out like, oh, she didn't do well. And my father is very strict and my mother is a supporter of that. So I knew she was going to support him. So there's no way to hide. And I thought she was my fault. I didn't realize, oh, you were so sick. Mm. You were not in school most of the time. Mm. So we're looking for poison. Nobody sold to us. Mm. Then I said, yeah, I remember the one they kill rats with, Indocid. Then they didn't sell that too. So she took me to her mother. Her mother said, why would you want to die? Ah, uh-uh. it's not, you have just started life. Let me talk to your parents. Anyways, I started looking for where to lay my head. For three days, they were looking for me at home. Mm. Wow. And eventually I went to a pastor's house with a family friend, took me back home. My mom held me and she cried, you know. She felt so bad that, well, I was punished for not 
coming home. <laughs> severely punished. But I was not punished. They punished me because they were scared I was going to die. Why why would you want to do that to yourself? So but they sat me down, my mom sat me down and encouraged me and she said to me, failure is not the end of success. Amen. No, it's just the beginning of it. Amen. If you believe in yourself, you are a brilliant child. The only reason you feel that she showed me the result and said, look at first time, second time you did well. It was because you were not in school. Mm. If you settle down, I'm going to take you to another school and you are going to top your class. That experience led me to Christ. Oh, Amen. miraculously, my second year in secondary school, my result was the complete opposite of the first year result. The first year result was all red from mathematics to Yoruba, all red. The second year was all blue, excellent, A1 from mathematics to Yoruba, all the right. subjects. I received all the prize, prize I was first in my class. In all the subjects. So I carried it home. <laughs> oh my God. And from then, I never failed. I just continued going like that. And that was one thing. And then ministry came my way. It wasn't so rosy because I was called in a way that it, nobody is used to that kind of calling in my environment. Mm. I just said that we were born and raised in deeper Christian life ministry. Mm. So you cannot be coming and be doing, oh, thus saith the Lord God, mm. and be scabashing and be saying, I see, I saw, Never. And Not in deeper life. as a child mm. and a woman. How? <laughs> From whence go the spirit of the Lord to you? <laughs> so it was, it was really hard. And to make it all complicated, that's why I said these things follow me. I got into part one. Before I got into the university, I finished secondary school at, at the age of 15. So prophecies started coming to my parents. Whatever you have, send this girl to school now. Ministry is going to take her out of school. The calling is going to come very quickly and all of that. My mom was taking care of a lawyer. I was supposed to be a lawyer. Mm. That's who she's grooming, a lawyer. My father had his expectations. And now a prophet is saying, prophets, not just one, prophet saying that ministry is going to come, send that to school. And they're wondering, she's young, she's 15. She doesn't need to go to school this year. So what is it? Well, by the time I got into school, I was around 17. Our institution and the calling came, like we said. So it was weird that at that time, in fact, in this age and time, that anybody will say, God is calling me into ministry full time, and you are not done. You can read, you can write, you know what you are doing. Everybody said I was crazy. Um, a pastor said it was a demonic spirit I was talking to. And everything was so hard. But my parents knew. In fact, my father knew. This was something they've always been told from the time I was born. But when I came to them initially, they felt, wait a minute, you cannot bring this to us right now. We are struggling. We have hopes. And you come in to say ministry. But because of what they had been told, just like in the case of Jesus Christ, that Mary was looking at the three wise men because she knew that indeed this child was a special child. Mm. So everything that was happening, verses that she was taking to record, she kept quiet because she knew. So then ministry came and boom, my first crusade, everything was, I thought that was how smooth it was going to be. Like, <laughs> it was a, what, what the people, what uh, um, people of my age would say, it was a eat. I mean, it was a eat. Well, if you need to confirm this, you can ask from Akure or Baile Ice Brown. Yeah, Job High School field. It was filled up. It was a hit. Everybody was like, wow, the pastors in that community came together and said, we took an untested product to the market. Because let me tell you, ministry itself is a marketplace. And I'm not talking about money. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about what comes into heat. Everything that you have to do. 
are you not going to talk about Jesus like you are actually marketing something and everything? So the gospel is, you have to be, a ve- you have to talk about Jesus in a way that people are going to understand this Jesus you are talking about. So they saw it and they were like, wow, let's go to the stadium. Because it was a hit. But after the first crusade, then came the science. Woo! Speed bump. Yes. Then I started experiencing what you would call competition, envy. I was a child, and all of the things were happening. You could call me a prophetess, you could call me an evangelist, you could call me because I was seeing, I was hearing, plain were walking. God was raising the dead, He was doing everything, and I was preaching. So, ha, how? This little girl. Everybody would leave our churches, mm. and and I was not. I didn't have that. Uh, my mind was not structured. My parents were ministers. They were zona leaders in the Bible Christian Life Ministry, but they were not into ministry. Mm. And they were all I had. And God led me to a father in the Lord who was guiding me, but he was not. This is something I'm just coming into. I was not prepared for the things that will happen to me. So then the struggle, I did not know that you have to, that you would need funds to do the things of God. That aspect, nobody informed me. I just felt like you want to preach, then people are going to automatically, it didn't work like that, it didn't happen like that. And I did not want to do things that was not pleasing of God. Then at the time I started, nobody would have seen me. I would have wanted to ask me how to because I looked like a child. <clears throat> Maturity did not come in very quickly. So at 15, at 16, at 17, you would think I was just 13. So nobody was asking me how. Nobody cared. And then, you know, I was just a child. So maturity came and people started to notice me. Ah, full package, she's pretty. <laughs> Maybe we can, you know. And nobody would take a female minister serious in our environment. Hmm. I'm, I'm sure you understand, my you are here. Yes. Understand. So, and to hand it, to hand insult to injury, I was now beautiful. So when I'm preaching, they are looking at me. They are thinking of, how can this get be wasted like this? Why is she preaching to us? Why is the funniest part was, I was holding a constant prayer meeting and I was using the hall of an hotel. When I'm walking to the hotel, the bar is just before the hall. So they are seated. I'm wearing a flowing dress covered from head to toe like an idea. I'm carrying a very big Bible because when we were brought up, you don't use laptops and phones for your Bible. So the preacher's Bible, the big one, in this age and time. And I'm, they are looking at me, is this girl mad? How can she be? Ah, ah, look at this. So there's a lot of you know, they'll look at me now. You are wasting your way. You are just wasting your life. Some would walk up to me and actually say it to me, like, Are you crazy? Are you sure about this thing you are doing? God called me. I know what I am doing. So the laughter, hmm. the the insults, and so many things that was coming. Hmm. But I stood firm. It was hard. It didn't just come in a day. We worked hard. I will tell you, for ministry, my mom will go and cook, cook for someone. I will be there, as pretty as I may seem to a lot of people, fanning the flame, washing plates, so that we can use the money to print posters for crusades. Mm, my we God. did it many times. Then my brother had to mm. take a teaching job. And from the salary was collected, we would print the posters oh and the ambience. Oh and by ourselves, all night, we would paste the posters. There were times we could not, we could not afford the stash to post it. It wasn't all rosy. It was really, really tough. We worked hard. If I didn't want to work hard, then I would have to go through the short route. And I will have many bitter, bad stories today. But... Thank God, who owns Zion, that it was that part I knew, and we were working towards it. So here we are today, 
Um, God did it by himself. The gift of a man, the Bible says, make it room for him. Amen. Faith did not find me in the club. Faith did not find me mm. on the laps of a man. Faith did not find me anywhere else. It found me doing the work of him that has sent me. I was diligently doing the work of God. And boom, escape. As regards domestic violence or abuse, um, in two ways, I, I love the fact that you expatiated on it. In Africa and in Nigeria especially, we believe that the only time you are abused is when somebody eats you. Mm. But it goes deeper than that. Whatever you are doing too much, and it's weighing down on the psychological fitness, um, the health of the other person, the total well-being of your partner mm. is an abuse. Mm. And I stand against it any day, any time. Yes. I do not believe that anybody deserves that kind of life. Because mm. let me tell you, it is very, very hazardous to our health. It's very hazardous to the sanity of our society. A lot of bitter women are products of abuse. A lot of bitter men are products of abuse. You can only exude what is being put into you. Mm. If you are constantly being put down by a man or a woman, mm. whichever way, probably is eating you or she's eating you or, 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 or talking down at you or taking over your finance or doing all sorts of things to put, to, to put you down. When you are coming out, you are going to be acting in such a manner that people will know something is wrong with you. Mm. In your workplace, you will not deliver the way you should. You won't be a good part of our society. So nobody deserves it. Our God is a good and is a gracious God. Amen. If religion makes you feel like you need to do it, mm. well, Jesus Christ is beyond religion. The Holy Spirit cuts across. God speaks to everybody. So don't you think that standing up for yourself and saying no to abuse is going to make God run away from you? No. Do you remember that when Moses stood up for his mm. people and eventually in the process, a murder was committed? That is how bad it was because he stood up against enslavement, against slavery, against abuse. He ran away. And I'm sure he was running away from everything and God himself. But God was following him quietly as he was running into exile. God was following him. So I need you to know that God is with you. Come rain, sunshine. Don't you let anybody hold you down and say, because you said no more, God is no longer with you. Mm -mm. God is for all. God is a universal President is for everybody, black, white, green, all sorts of colors, all sorts of codes. He understands you. Mind you, let me remind you that Moses was learning magic. I've said this before and I'm going to say it again. Mm -hmm. All he knew was magic. That's all he knew. And then the God of Israel needed to speak to him because God understands that nobody deserves to die in abuse. Mm -hmm. And God went to him. In the burning bush, because that was the experience he knew about. And how was God going to get his attention in the burning bush? God became his friend, his partner. Gave him power, empowered him. He went back, delivered his people from abuse. Mm. See, Nigeria itself is going through abuse. There are certain things that should not be happening. So it's not just in the home. I sincerely and seriously stand against it. God sent Moses back. He withdrew that, his people, from the hands of their slave masters, brought them out into a free land, and God was waiting for them. Of course, when you come out of abuse, there's going to be a wilderness experience, like for the children of Israel. But in that very wilderness, the Lord is waiting. You will experience the greatest revival of all time, and you will see the living God. God bless you. Sometimes, you see, as human beings, we can tell ourselves the truth. You cannot judge your relationship or what you are going through. Are you sure you are experiencing abuse? Then if you are experiencing abuse, I don't see reasons why you should die being abused. Mm. I need to be very factual about this. I need to tell you this because you know why? You carry a destiny first. 
before you got into the relationship. See, your boss may be abusing, your boss may be a serious, he may be very, very narcissistic in nature. Why must you keep working there? Mm -hmm. If you trust God to give you another good paid employment, because at the end of the day, you will get nowhere. In Yoruba, we say, Lako, in Gajolure. It's not possible. Every time, that's the meaning of abuse. You try to raise your head. The investor will bring your head down. So do you want to stay? And when it gets to the peak of it, you will know. See, there is no... Sometimes what we call abuse could be challenges. But you know when you are being abused. You are going to know. You'll be losing yourself. You will know this is not you anymore. You, you, your light will be going dim gradually. People around you will notice. You will know by yourself that, okay, sometimes you try to talk to your partner and work things out. But if it's not working, if it's not working, my dear brother and sister, let me explain to you in this way. If it gets too much, it ends in murder, like in the case of Moses. Mm. Mm. Because you would deal with it in a very angry and bitter way before you become bitter. Walk in. And the Lord will walk with you. Before it gets to the point that anger will surge from within. Do you know how long the children of Israel has been in Egypt? Sometimes your abuser might be your help. Mm. It's still not an excuse exactly. to keep sticking your neck. Mm -hmm. Oh yes, the Egyptians were helpers to the Israelites. But when they were being abused, oh no, they cried unto God and God heard them. Do you realize that they escaped, how they escaped, everything that they needed was provided by God. In fact, they had not the chariots and the horses. Save for the rod in the hand of Moses mm. and the Lord was with them and he saved them. Mm. So you can know if you are a child of God, you have the privilege to talk to the Holy Spirit. You need to sit in front of the mirror and ask yourself, am I just throwing tantrums? Am I just being a child? Is this painful? You know what pain is. Doctors will ask you in the hospital on a scale of one to 10, how painful is your pain? You should be able to tell. We all know what abuse is. You should know what you can, what, what your spirit can take. If the children of Israel stayed there, they will never know a Canaan. So that is it for me. And those talking about my marriage, this isn't about me. As a preacher, you make nothing about yourself. And I can't see the questions. I don't know what you're asking me, but just know that uh, hmm, I've hung called in Jesus, the storms of life have been. So I have an anchor, and the ship is standing firm. <laughs> God is saying, um, well, I believe strongly in women empowerment. I believe very, in fact, you are one of the people that has been an inspiration in that aspect. Mm -hmm. uh, from when I was a child, I see how you stand strongly about women empowerment. Do you see what women are doing? Do you see what God is doing through women? I mean, we have such a grace. And I see no reasons why anybody should not want to empower a woman. In fact, a girl child. Women should be, you should not just sit down as a woman. Please, if you are not empowered, empower yourself. Exactly. If nobody is empowering you, My. empower yourself. Because do you know what it means to be a woman? It means that you are, you carry the traits of the two. Hmm the traits of the man and the woman. That's why it's called woman because you were brought out of the man. So your origin is the man. That's why you must stand up and be what God wants you to be. There is so much that we can, the man can only be a man. But as a woman, don't just sit down. Hmm. We are called a help meet hmm. and you are not helping. Your essence is dying if you cannot help. If you cannot say, oh, ah, do you know how men behave when things are not working for them, business-wise, career-wise? <laughs> they fall apart completely. Mm. That is why they can never handle labor. That's why you can never find a man in the labor room. Possible. 
So what I'm saying in essence is that <laughs> as the woman, when you stand strong, do you know what empowerment means? The life of the virtuous woman. That's a complete woman. That's what God wants you to be. The woman who did not just sit, sleep from morning till the husband returns and wakes up. She was doing so many things. So that when that from the outside does not work, the husband has a safe place. You are the bank of the man. So when he comes in, you shield him and you tell him, welcome home. We don't need to go out. There's tomatoes at home. There is pepper at home. The children are fine. They are all sleeping. I have warmed your back. You can come and rest. You are the man's rest. Mm. And do you know what it means to be rest? Our parents may our rest. When we are going, our parents are our rest. Your rest is somebody you can call. Ah, can you can you raise me? You are supposed to be a race. Not damage the two legs of the man. He is extra lean. So please, whatever happens, if you are a man, you are listening to me, support your wife. You are going to need it, honestly. You won't believe it, but you need it. Mm. <laughs> Women are very deep. Oh. And men are, men are more on the surface than women. So support your wife. Uncle, support your little niece. Anything that you can do, you will enjoy it. We are very compassionate. No, we don't just throw sympathy. We are compassionate. We are we gather people up. We love so much. And we have warmth. Mm. So when you put good eat in our fireplace, it will be your joy. You will enjoy it. We are your climate plan. Oh my God. Oh my God. I need to read three comments. You number one, a lot of people are saying they love you, but this person said, please. Tell her I love her. Oh. I deliver your message. <laughs> Thank you. Then she said, if nobody empowers you, empower yourself. Yes, then this person said, I have said so many bad things about this woman. Oh. I am sorry. Oh. I apologize. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I love you so much. So much. God bless you. God reward you for your um sincerity and for loving me i love you thank you thank you Woo. so you have a foundation wings tell us about it we still have a few more minutes before we close okay and um, how we just... people can you know okay <coughs> Uh, so we've just finished talking about women empowerment um that's what wings is all about is is um, women in need of guidance and support and we extend it to girls not just women because we i i have a passion for women and children so it's about women and children in general because whatever concerns a woman the next thing is children our our strength and our weakness is our children let us be very sincere with ourselves oh yes we love so much because at the end of the day our husbands they are our children too. Mm. So take care of a woman. Any society that empowers women <coughs> is, a, is a balanced society. So Wings is about empowering women. We want to see that they are catered for. We don't want to see any woman feeling down or low. We offer counseling. We offer guidance. We offer um, money and to, to raise them in their businesses, to then we give them um, um, skills, we help them to learn a trade and all of that. We set up small <coughs> businesses. And then some women, so many things that we do, if you go on our website, and um, I wish I could release that now, but it's not in my head, but go on my Facebook and my Instagram, um, okay, then on you YouTube. Okay, okay, Quinshi Lepola. A majesty queen Shile Pola Nawi. Ogunsi, you'll be able to find it on Instagram and on Facebook. Queen Shile Pola Nawi, you find it there. So, whatever questions you need to ask further about Wings, Wings has done so much. Then we have Wings Queen, Wings Queen on Instagram. Um, it's the Instagram page for the uh, for the foundation. We have done so much, and we look forward to doing much more. And if you are a woman that God has blessed. We always say it, we rise by lifting others. But do we really, really do it? Do we really mean it? The only way you are going to tell me that you mean this is to come on board, support me, 
as we raise other women. Together, we are strong. But alone, we can be pushed and tossed aside. So let us help the next woman. All of it's not a competition. I actually saw a comment on Instagram. Let me quickly use the second to address it. Uh, someone was, I don't know if it's, I don't know, well, sounded genuinely concerned and said, oh, that's a mood picture of you. For a fact, I know that you did not, you are not the one that used this picture. It's the team. They don't want you to outshine. Come, come, come. Uh, uh, uh. Come, no, let no. me explain to you. That's one of my most favorite pictures mm. in this world mm. lovely portrait of me and we are not in any competition you understand and we are not in any competition no. especially because we respect those who have gone ahead of us mm. and when we do we get a lot of it's not a competition how can we compete with our mother and a mother does not feel like competing with a child we are in love that's what it is. So there's no competition. God bless you. Support Wings. Support my foundation. Uh, You've heard from your very queen, Nehomi Silekun Ola. She has given you everything you need to know about her, her biography, how she gave her life to Christ at the age of nine, all the things she went through while growing up, how she did her first crusade, and everything you need to know about her. A lot of people thought, oh, she's this, she's that, but actually she's just a simple, beautiful woman, a woman of God, a prophetic mother of yours that needs done and pray for you. Yeah, again, yes, we hope to bring more of our content, bring more of our content into this platform. All right, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye. Prophetic mothers, a mother that loves, prays, directs, and not just spiritual growth and development, the wings of fire.